We've got Greg from Cats in Space. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. What a remarkable situation we are in now. We're on the, we're on the cusp of greatness in here because we have just come out of the worst situation in the world, getting out to playing live music again. And you guys have got a fifth studio album out. Yeah. It's like the stars of a line for you. It's a bit weird, yeah. I mean, it's since last March, I kind of went into the studio to do what became the Atlantis album, and I've been there ever since, because obviously with the way things are and the tour's getting moved forward and stuff, it just seems like I've lived in the studio up on this farm for the last 18 months. So. I've not really noticed COVID at all, to be fair, apart from the tour get getting cancelled. And being locked away. How being is, locked away as I should be, of course. As a performer, though, how has that been for you, for, for you as a band, you know, to, to have that mm. constant promise, maybe, perhaps, it might happen, and then it's all pushed forward. It's got to have some kind of impact on yeah, you as individuals. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think what I'm being mindful of is that the whole world is talking the same questions and answers about all this, and I think we could get sucked into this kind of you know, very depressive kind of summary of what's been going on. So I've tried to look at it on a positive way, you know, and it's like we didn't personally feel the pinch the first time it got moved because it's not the first time tours have been cancelled, but the second time was a bummer. Um, but all through that period, apart from the actual headache of trying to get the dates to line up in time, we just knew that the Atlantis album was going to come out on its own without a tour to support. And we just hoped that eventually people would still remember the album when we did get out and play, which is now, obviously. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, we've been OK. You know, from a creative point of view, it's been really good for us. But, yeah, live, it's been a nightmare. And it's an overall, you know, the, I think the energy of the new album, which is, which is, I listened to it the other day for the first time. The first time? For the first time, indeed. Where have you been? Uh, well, I, I've been, like, into the moon, basically. <laughs> and I haven't come back since, so I've just arrived yesterday. The Man in the Moon. The so Man in the Moon, first yeah. album. Hey, That's it, yeah. Go and buy it. Too many gods. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Plug, 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 plug. Yeah. We could do this all day, couldn't we? I bought Gene Simmons's book, so. <laughs> I'm have you got those little toys and things that you maybe sell cats and space fish? I used to have. I used to have a lot of the kiss stuff. Yeah, I used to collect it, but I flogged it all off when the when the market was high. <laughs> pinball, I, I had a pinball machine. Yeah, I had a lot. Yeah, yeah. absolutely amazing. But this new album is, I, the, the the energy I get from it is it's like really really positive, and it's it really is an album for this time. When well, we spoke oh, yeah. a few moments ago about you know we could dwell on the negativity but let's not do that no, no. let's look at what this album provides the fans and the listeners and obviously over this weekend is all about spreading that love and positivity Absolutely. through the music that's the word positivity and this album does all of that i believe yeah it's uplifting you know there's obviously we've still got our um well mainly my take on a few situations that have gone on in the world but all very tongue-in-cheek nothing we do is to be taken at face value we are quite tongue-in-cheek and it's all done playfully always has been if you want to take it seriously if you want to delve into it great please do but also skim it as well because it's it's there to be enjoyed on different levels and uh yeah it's, it's an uplifting album um it's the beginning of the new chapter for us with damien edwards joining us obviously mm -hmm. Um, and as we was doing the Atlantis album, we were already planning the next part of the journey for the next album because everything was just following on and we just thought, we're on a roller coaster now, let's just keep doing it. So it is, it's an uplifting album and we urge everybody to go and buy it, of course, because, you know, we really need the money, as every other band in the country does. You know, we do, I know everyone goes, oh, we need the money, folks, but bands need it more than ever now. And it's serious, you know, it's not... It's, it's kind of it's a going, mad situation it is it is and i'll tell you what it's not just bands on our level even the bigger bands are having to have a little double check on things and they're not they can't quite be as snobby as they would have been before and it's a whole ground zero thing where people have just got to go out and re-engage with the fans and that goes from you know the biggest bands i made and right the way down to the bands in the pubs you know you've it's not a joke. If you want to survive, you've got to really get out there and engage with people again. Well, I imagine they're doing a club tour, so that just tells oh, you really do. that's their plan for doing a club tour. But today, for you guys, it's going to be absolutely incredible. I think when you first, well, let me ask this question. When you first got the call for Stone Dead, what did you know about this festival before you came? That it was called Stone Deaf. Originally. Yeah, that's, that's all I knew about it, really, to be honest. And uh, No, I'd, I'd heard of it, and um, obviously I see all the tours that go on and all the festivals that ignore us every year. 
um, because of our name, whatever. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm well, well abreast of all the, all the situation. But this one, we, we liked, and I've, I've always liked this one because it was one day, knock them up, get them in, good old fashioned Donington from the old days type thing, Monsters of Rock thing. And that, that to me is what a festival should be. I'm not into this carnival, blooming five day, come and bring your caravans and go glamping. I'm not into all that. And 85 stages full of stilt walkers and a few bands. And that. Rock and roll's meant to be fast and hard. Knock them in, knock them out. Knock them in, uh, uh, knock them out. And it's, just, it's also, it's, I think with people's um, attention spans nowadays, they're so short. You know, you're lucky to get 30 seconds on a video. So if you've got this massive festival with 400 bands on it, where on earth are you going to be able to even think about giving anybody any of your attention unless you're waiting to see Ed Sheeran on the main stage at two in the morning on Sunday, whatever, you know? It's, <laughs> whereas if you've got six, seven bands on one day all doing this kind of thing, there's your lineup. come on down, get into your position and just stay there for the day and send someone out to get you a beer. That's how it should be. And I think people can... They can handle that right now. I think too much information is not a good thing. Uh, no. Just freedom in short, short spurts. Yeah. You know, have a taste of it. space from the bill. Absolutely, absolutely. Dive into Atlantis, of course, the tour. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What's the plan with that? How big is this going to be for you guys? Well, we started last night in Lancaster, and it was really good. That was in the theatre. Really, really, really good night. I mean, we, none of us had played apart from the one festival the other week. This was the first full set we have done. First time all the Cats fans had come out to see us, so it's a bit of a kind of reintroducing yourself to a lot of people, but it was a fantastic night, really, really good. It went down way better than we thought. And we've got dates going through September, you know, you know going to like, you know, Bilston, and we're going to Southampton and Norwich and London and um, other places that I can't remember. Oh, Milton Keynes we're going to and Hexham. And um, yeah, just trying to reacquaint ourselves as a live band again, but it, it's tough. It's not, be under no illusion, people are still reticent about buying tickets for a whole load of different reasons. So it's, it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a crapshoot, to be fair. But someone's got to stick their flag in the sand and get out and start it because it's very easy to go. We're cancelling because of whatever. Mm -hmm. And the more and more bands cancel at the last minute because of whatever, all they're doing is sending more and more shockwaves through to the punters. We're going, ooh, maybe it's not right to buy a ticket. I mean, I wouldn't buy a ticket to see a band if I thought they were going to cancel the day before. No. And you've got your hotel booked and whatever. So people are really leaving it till the last minute because they don't believe that the gig's going to happen. And we need to get that gone. We need to try and give people the confidence to go out and buy tickets and just say, look, these things will happen. Please buy a ticket, you know. Well, so, so the Atlantis tour, yeah, we're, we're doing it and hopefully it will be as good as it was last night. Well, I have to say, thank you very much. And I, I really do wish you the very best of luck with thank the tour. You. And of course, today, very, very exciting. Cats in Space is going to be playing for us uh, this, this afternoon or early evening. And it's going to be amazing. So thank you very, very much, Greg. It's been a pleasure to speak to you, Always sir. Always a pleasure, never an outrage. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.